أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعص إن الإنسان لفي خص إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أما بعد Respected listeners, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send salutations upon the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Alhamdulillah, through the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are witnessing the opening of the month of Sha'ban. And in this month of Sha'ban, there is few prophetic narrations which should really incite us to take heed of the importance of this month and also for us to understand the significance of these months leading to the month of Ramadan. One of the main parts of the month of Sha'ban is that at many times people would seem to revere and uphold the month of Rajab because it was the month in which the Isra and the Mi'raj took place and because there is an event so we understand the month of Rajab and also knowing that the month of Rajab is the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden any type of fightings. So people show a great significance to the month of Rajab. And then people really look forward to the month of Ramadan because it is the month where the Ummah in its entirety, those that are capable fast in this month, and we have the Taraweeh that take place in this month, and just a different type of atmosphere. And we seem to forget about the month of Sha'ban, which is in between Rajab and Ramadan. And this is not something which is contemporary. This is something which was the habit in the past. And that is why when we look at these prophetic narrations, we come to understand that this was the ideology and that we have to understand the importance of this month. Sayyidina Aisha, the wife of the Prophet wasallam, mentions that in the month of Sha'ban, and this was the different ways of the Prophet ﷺ approaching this month, that in one month, in the month of Sha'ban, he would fast until we would think that he would fast the whole month, but he wouldn't complete it, but he would fast so much, so much in this month of Sha'ban that we would think that he is going to fast the whole month of Sha'ban. And then in another month of Sha'ban, he would not fast until we would think that he is not going to fast at all in this month of Sha'ban. And when the Prophet wasallam, and she says that one thing for sure is that there was no month in which the Prophet wasallam fasted the entire month except for the month of Ramadan. Now when we look at the Sahaba, and that is why when we read books like written by Faris al-Khatib, which is the lost Islamic history. And when you go into deep into history, and if we connect, we come to, under, we come to understand the great contribution from the companions and those scholars that came after them, whether it is science, whether it is geometry, whether it is geography, whether it is astronomy. In all of these sciences, the Muslims have com- contributed greatly. And the reason for mentioning this is that when we read the lives of the Sahaba, what we think in today's time is modern and contemporary, we find it in the lives of the Sahaba. Like for example, in counseling you have something which is, they determine your behavior, behavior, behavioral studies, where you study the behavior of a person. This was long time done by the Sahaba when they would sit in the company of the Prophet and when you read this here, you find that one of the Sahaba who was actually in the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Usama bin Zaid, he is the one that 
As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this narration comes in the narration of Imam Nasa'i. He says, I said to the Prophet sallallahu why is it that you give so much of reverence and significance and fasting in this month of Sha'ban? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, ذَلِكَ شَهْرٌ يَغْفَلُ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ بَيْنَ رَجَبٍ وَرَمَضَانًا This is a month which many people neglect, which many people do not take heed of. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, تُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ In the month of Sha'ban, our deeds are raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صَائِمٌ And I love that my deeds be raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state that I am fasting. Now what does this mean? We know in the, in the narration of Imam Muslim, who is one of the great narrators of hadith, who was also a student of Imam Bukhari, we know that in that narration of his, he says that the raising of our deeds, remember that there is an assembly of angels which come at the time of Fajr, and after Fajr our deeds are raised. And then after Asr, this is daily, daily twice our deeds are taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen very carefully. After Fajr and after Asr. And when these angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but it's just for us to be aware that our day is acknowledged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the deeds are raised after Fajr and after Asr. And when a person reads his Fajr and his Asr, and when the angels are asked, how did you find my servants? At both occasions they say we found them while they were praying. So this is the daily accounting that is taken place for a belief for, 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 for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second accounting that is taken by us is the weekly. And the weekly one is on Mondays and Thursdays. Every Monday and every Thursday our accounting is taken. And that is why we find in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he would fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And then we have the yearly accounting that is taken place. Subhanallah, this is the business that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing with his, with his servants. Like how we treat business in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own business which he treats with each and every individual. So that is why when it says, when we, when we reach on top, فَتَجِدُهُ عَمَلُهُ حَادِرًا You will find all your books, all your deeds, everything will be waiting for you in full. Nothing will be omitted from there. Everything. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرَ يَرَى Whoever does any type of good deeds, he will see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَى And even if it's a seed, an iota, a small seed of bad deeds, you will see it on the day of Qiyamah. Everything will be there. Through these accounting that is taking place. So we have the daily, weekly, and the yearly for the whole year that is lifted in the month of Sha'ban and that is why Nabi Sallallahu gave great significance to this month of Sha'ban. Respected listeners, also this is the month of preparation. As we had made mention that in the month of Rajab is the month for watering. The month of Sha'ban is the month for preparing. What type of preparation, if we can try and fast one or two days, to get your body used to the idea that the month of Ramadan is coming. In fact, one of the students that I was discussing with said to me, who is a new Muslim, said to me that I find it so difficult to fast in the month of Ramadan, but last year what I have been doing is that I fast in the month of Sha'ban and I find that when I come into the month of Ramadan, it seems to be a bit more easier for me to fast. So that is one way of looking at the benefit of fasting in this month of Sha'ban leading towards the month of Ramadan. The second preparation is that this is the month of Ramadan should be Shahrul Qur'an. And one thing that we should understand when we say Shahrul Qur'an, not only reading and making khatams of the Qur'an, but it should be that either we make intention that at least I want to memorize three or four surahs added to my, to, to, to my account. So I want to memorize three or four more surahs. Those that don't know how to read Quran, I want to use this month of Sha'ban to prepare myself in a schedule 
that are start maybe taking interest in learning how to recite the Quran or in learning how to improve my pronunciation of the Quran or in learning how to uh, choosing a surah and saying that in the month of Ramadan I will focus on the surah and I will read everything that is to do with the surah. So these are type of preparations that we can make for the month of Ramadan. And finally, the month of... This. So when we make these schedules in this month, and finally, respected listeners, let us remember that in this month of Sha'ban, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it is a month which many of my followers neglect. Let us not become of those that neglect this month of Sha'ban. Let us try and do some type of creativity, some type of, some type of actions which can be added in this month of Sha'ban so that when the month of Ramadan comes, we welcome the month of Ramadan fully prepared and derive maximum benefit from the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding and grant us the ability to witness the month of Ramadan and take maximum benefit from this month of Sha'ban. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.